Wow, those moments you just don't know what to say and you just kind of breathe it in. I mean, from what everybody has shared tonight, um, what an amazing evening. So with that, I do want to thank Andre. Thank you so much for all you've done, the people you've invited, your friends. Thank you, Penny, for flying all the way up, being here, joining us. Um, I want to thank our Thrive team. You've heard about tonight, Dale, Linda, Carrie, who put on tonight, literally put on tonight. Um, this would not be possible without the amazing supporting cast and team that we have. And lastly, thank everybody. Thank you so much for coming to hear about Thrive and be here and support. I want to set a little bit of context first. I don't think anybody would disagree. Our world is changing and it's changing fast. We have lots of incidences of war. We have rapid inflation. We've got economic problems. We do hear about environmental climate change. I come from British Columbia. I promise you the climate is changing. And we hear about all of these changes and we're impacted here in North America. But I can promise you that those living in the developing world, the poor people, they are getting impacted so much worse. I can complain when I go to the grocery store that my groceries are up 15%. But those in Eastern Africa, they're up 20, 30%. And when you don't have anything, that bit of gasoline, it makes such a difference. I'm gonna tell you just a few quick stories over the last couple months that really rocked me. I was talking about gasoline. We launched in Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka nine, 10 months ago, and they went through a currency crisis. And I was in a meeting with an executive director of an organization that operates in 40 countries. And he sat there and I asked how his weekend was and I shared about how my camping experience out in the BC wilderness was amazing. And he told me how his weekend was great. He stood in line for 12 hours to get a liter of fuel. And it just dawned on me how these changes are making a difference. There's a story of Laura that I met three months ago and Thrive is doing a partnership with her organization, International Agency of Refugees. And we're gonna do a partnership to launch in a refugee community in Malawi. She told me about Zlika with 50,000 refugees. And she told me how a lot of the refugees at this stage because of the global food crisis and food not moving around the way it should, she told me how they're down to one meal a day. And she said, even when the United Nations World Food Program sends in food trucks, they get robbed and destroyed, and they don't even know how to get food in. A Couple months ago, I met Samson. Samson runs a private academy of 600 students in Burkina Faso. And he was telling me how amazing their academy is building up the leaders and the next generation of his country. They used to have three awesome meals a day, but now they have two, and sometimes one, and sometimes it consists of nothing more than rice. This is happening everywhere in so many developing countries around the world. This is what's happening. But that's not what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about stories of hope, and I wanna talk about hope, and I wanna celebrate that hope that's happening. At Thrive, we have four pillars. First and foremost, we teach and train people how to garden, and how to make good use of the land they already have, and how to make their own food sustainable. And then second of all, our second pillar is, it's not just about food. It's not just about providing food for empty bellies. It's about nutritious food, and it's about healthy food. Third of all, we teach about herbal medicine. Diseases are rampant in so many of the communities and countries we work in. There's no safety net. There's one doctor for every 10,000 people. But when you can eat herbal, disease-fighting foods, as we saw in the video with Natreen, Health is right there for you, and your life changes. Our fourth pillar is about income generation, providing something that, to a lot of people that we work with, they've never had that luxury or that opportunity. Linda uh, Bolton shared a story about a woman who was able to buy her first ever mattress just by selling a surplus of vegetables from her garden. My favorite stat, if you, we were downstairs in the fort and you saw some of the banners hanging up, there was three banners with just a whole bunch of numbers. We measure relentlessly what we do to make sure we're having impact and we're doing the right thing. And in that, my favorite stat is 65%. Two out of every three projects we start, after a year, they're sustainable. 
They don't need us anymore. And they will continue on and on and on without any further support. For $750, we start a community garden that will impact 40 people. It's $15 a person. The ROI is incredible. And that's how I got involved in this organization four and a half years ago when I met Dale and Linda. This year, Thrive, we are scaling, literally launching in a new country every other month. We're rapidly scaling we're by launching through partnerships with other charities to come alongside other charities, support them, and walk alongside to the good work they're already doing and infuse our, mes our message of nutrition to them. With that, in closing, food security is rapidly becoming the number one issue in our global world today. Whether it's economics, whether it's environment, all of these things impact the food that people in developing countries will eat. But we can solve it. And not only can we solve it, we can do it well. And we can do it good with health. I'll close with a personal story that's a close to my heart. My wife, she actually all, she runs a charity as well. And it's in the medical space. And the, uh, her organization, Corlebu, they source and secure medical equipment from uh, you know, uh, health, health agencies here in Canada. They ship it over to Western Africa countries. They send training uh, to hospitals and clinics over there, and they send teams to do medical missions, neurological surgery medical conditions. I learned what that word was a few years ago in meeting her. And with that, she went to her first trip to Liberia three years ago, one of the poorest countries in the world, 70 kilometers of paved roads. My wife grew up in South Africa. She's African. And when she went to Liberia and she came home, she didn't talk about the experience for three months. And finally, after a number of months, we started talking about it. And she said, Jamie, I get it. I now know why Thrive exists. She said, I experienced death at the hospital. I hadn't even unpacked my bags on my first day. And she says, so many of the surgeries that we performed for things like spina bifida, she said, honestly, that was preventable. That wasn't necessary. If the pregnant woman would have been having access to folic acid, which is rich in vegetables, if that would have been the case, then that disease wouldn't have happened and it wouldn't have been necessary. I now know why Thrive exists and why it is so important everywhere. So with that, I hope tonight that you are inspired. I hope that you celebrate the work that we're doing. We literally, I, I got a, a message earlier this week. We launched in 114 new communities just last month. And um, with that, if you want to be involved, there are donation cards on the table. There's plenty of Thrive staff. Come talk to us, learn more, find out how you can get involved. We'd love to share these, um, you know, inspirational stories with you and these stories of hope. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of this tonight and fueling to make this happen.